and my middle name is NSF Feed. Bank of America, I paid so many NSF fees, that's my name. $35 a pop. Saturday I'm closing my B of A account. I'm losing my home. I'm losing my home. I've lived there for 17 years I've lived in my home. See these braces on my teeth? I have no health insurance. I can't get them taken off. I came down here to support you guys today. I was born in Oakland. I live here. I still live here. I was going to leave, but after I see what's going on today, I might stay. I really might stay. They're closing schools. They're closing libraries. Where's the mayor? Do we have a mayor? Where is Miss Kwan? But my point is, with Bank of America, the biggest bank that holds two of my mortgages, they hold my mortgage. I guess I'm about 33 payments behind on one, and the other one about 28 payments behind on the other one. What am I supposed to do? I'm 53. Where am I going to live? And I'm okay, but what about the ones that are 23? How are you going to qualify for an $800,000 loan? Think about it. How are you going to qualify for an $80,000 loan? Where are you going to get your medical insurance? If you go to Highland and you've got a main problem, once they take care of you, you're going to rot in the hallway. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, people get liver transplants because they have money. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm a Latter-day Saint. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason I'm a Latter-day Saint. For some of you that don't like this, that do like this, I am reborn. And the bottom line is I may stay in Oakland. And I am so proud of seeing you guys today. Maybe they're not going to get their toilet paper in Salt Lake tomorrow, or Portland, or Modesto, because the port is shut down. So I'm here to support you guys 100%. But just remember one thing, Saturday, I'm shutting all my B of A accounts down. No more. No more. And, and one, more, one more thing, one more thing. When we tread along here, we walk through here, you have to remember the Ohlone was here first. The Ohlone walked through here. Not the port, not the Mayflower, not Mexico, not Cuba, not France. The Ohlone were here. So let's walk through here and respect them. And let's respect what we have. And you guys take care of each other. I mean it. Because if you don't, you're going to be like me. You're going to be 50 plus with nowhere to live. I love you and peace to you guys, okay? Yes, thank you. I'm getting my words flipped. Please. Right on, brother. I had to do it. Oh, yeah. I never speak in front of people. Hey, what's up? I'm Jacobo. I was born and raised in San Francisco. Um, sorry I'm a Niners and Giants fan, but I love Oakland today. You guys are doing something historic that our grandchildren are going to write about and read about as historians. This is honestly the rebirth of American democracy, and they're going to compare this to some 1890s populist movement type deal. But what I wanted to really say was, even when people in the movement talk about this movement we have sometimes, we're a little bit down on ourselves. We're a little bit like, you know, I was sort of skeptical about this movement. We had no, you know, purpose. We had no written uh, policy demands. You know, I didn't think people knew enough about the Financial Services Modernization Act of 1999 that repealed Glass-Steagall, this, this type of business. But what I'm here to tell you is, this, I've been waiting my entire life on this earth. My 24 years on this life, I've been waiting for a movement like this. There's been no visible activism for working people, for non-white people, for non-straight people, for non-male bodied people in my entire life. And now, people have come together and just do not sleep on this movement. This is our... We can't afford any lobbyists. Barack Obama in 2012 is going to spend a billion dollars on his election campaign. We can't afford any of that. We have one party that's a wholly owned subsidiary of, you know, the health insurance industry, the financial industry, drug companies, and we have another that caters to them as well. That's why we're out here lobbying with our bodies. So never act like this is not the most important part of politics right here. You guys are doing something historic. And it's going to be written about for hundreds of years. I kid you not, if you were interested in the environmental movement, you thought, hey, well, uh, you know, 
uh, we're going to run out of resources and World War III will be fought off over water and, you know, the climate is rising, the polarized counts are melting. You thought that? You're exactly right. Well, it turns out the same reason that is not getting solved and we're not figuring out how to cooperate and live on this finite planet, the reason is because of uh, a bot off. Uh, a bought-off political system, not just in the United States, but around the world, where uh, the major corporations can pursue profit, uh, falsely believe that money is real, and destroy themselves along with all of us in the process, in their pursuit of, pro in their pursuit of profit. So we're out here putting a stop to that. Uh, I just want to say, once again, how beautiful you guys are. I really appreciate it. I just want to say that every single fucking person in this port right now is a genius in your own right and you all inside of your heart have the solution that we need. The solution is already here. And this is an incredibly important announcement. Good evening folks. I'm John Hughes, better known as Little John, and I am an active longshoreman. I am not here representing or speaking for them, but I'm letting you know that we are thanking you guys for showing up. Um, let me say this first before I get to the announcement. I know that Reverend Dr. King is looking down on us and he's smiling because if we remember the Montgomery boycott for the buses because people of color couldn't ride in the front and he organized and all the struggle they went through and they still made it. We didn't quite have that much of a struggle, but we did have the police come in here and shoot a young man who served his country and did not get hurt over there pulling two tours, and then he come over here and get hit by his own supposedly protection agency. And you guys still showed up knowing that that could happen to you, and we're grateful for you guys for this. And give yourselves a big hand. Now, but let's not get too happy. We need to stay out here to half past 10 o'clock, as they say in the country, which is 10.30, because it is brought down to us that the employers are going to late order at 8 o'clock, which gives them till 8.45 to get in here. So if we really want this to mean something, if we really want to stop corporate greed and make our statement, we need to hang out here just a little while longer and show these folks that the one percent is really in, is not in charge, but the 99 is. That's the greater number. So let's remember, if we get, we need to stay out here to half past 10 o'clock, 10:30 for y'all. That's the best way to block it. Stand here, what you doing? Let's be here peaceful. We don't have to get crazy. We don't have to ignite a riot. We don't have to do any of that. All we have to do is keep doing what we're doing, and that's celebrating this victory that the 99 had today. All right? So give yourselves a big hand, folks. Thank you, Little John and Ron Foreman. Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! Shut it down! coming out and speaking. It was very eloquent and powerful. Who's up next? Do you want to say something? Okay, we have some kids up here and I'm looking at them right now and they're really beautiful. And they're clapping with us and they have signs. And this is for them, because this is their world. Hey guys! We're pioneers. Okay, who wants to talk? I'm Keon again, sorry. I, I just, I, I was talking to my friends about uh, some solutions to, the, to some of these problems. Um, I was talking about um, how people are being forced out of their homes because their homes are underwater. But why, why, and so the bank uh, short sales the house and the, pe the person has to just get kicked out. But why can't the banks just short sell the house and give a, the, the resident a chance to rebuy it at that lower price? The bank still takes the same loss, 
but the person gets to stay in their house. Which I think is a much better solution, and I don't understand why we can't come up with stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Woo! Yes. yes, solutions. Would you like to say something? During the Vietnam War, we didn't know we had the power until the war was over. Now we know we got the power from the beginning. The question is, what are we going to do with it? A lot, of, a lot of energy here that we can harness. The biggest problem we got is an economic crisis. The economic crisis of the Earth is because the one iron law of economics that you never find in any book ever that everybody knows in story and song that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer is working its magic on our country this very minute and we're just getting poorer. We've got to change that. The reason we have a progressive income tax is because all the money goes to the money. We've got to get it back to the bottom and get the pump going again. Money that's stagnant up at the top isn't doing the rich people any good. It's not doing the poor people any good. we got to get the money flowing. And you get that by taxing the rich people. And this crap about, about flat taxes is bullshit. They put all the, the, the money that costs it to run the government on the backs of people. When they talk about lowering the taxes, they never talk about lowering the payroll tax. Ever heard anybody say they're lowering the payroll tax? Not on your life. They're lowering rich people's taxes. And finally, they got the, the whole country is on your back. There's a gate that's about a mile away that needs people at, at it. So if, if people are on bikes and can go down to the last gate and get there. We need more people to go. Yeah, so we need more people to shuffle down this way. And bikers, scream if you're a biker. Okay, so if you're a... And it's really incredible that we're all here tonight. Um, but if we go home and we go back to our regular lives tomorrow and we don't make any change, it won't be as effective as it could if we make a little change, if we get involved wherever we are on whatever we can. And that is what will make this change. That's what makes my kids who go from like 20% with no hope of graduating high school, of passing any classes, to being able to turn it around, redo work, go to college is a little bit, a little bit of time changing our habits, changing the habits to get up an hour earlier, right? Write those letters, actually walk somewhere instead of spending as much money as we do on, you know, our gas and our oil and all that. Rage for, you know, in solidarity with other people. Challenge ignorance everywhere. We all have so many things that we can work on. So I think we just need to commit to doing that. And that will make the big difference. Thank you. Thank you. Open mic. Open mic. That's actually